Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, who is a Tribble. It's not a wig or a toupee, it's, he's a Tribble. So <laughs> many people have been wondering. So today I want to talk about uh, what the heck is this 5G Internet of Things. You've probably heard this, this term, IoT, Internet of Things. What the heck is it and what does 5G have to do with it? So, <clears throat> okay. Uh, a few weeks ago, Amazon introduced a whole bunch of new stuff, uh, Echo gizmos. Now the Amazon Echo, you're probably aware, this is like this, uh, usually it's a little cylindrical thing. You plop it on your living room table, uh, you connect it to your internet, and you can talk to it and say like, Alexa, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? And it will of course tell you what the weather is going to be. You can buy stuff, you can, you know, blah, blah, blah. So. Um, Usually you have one of these, you put it in one room of your house. Maybe you have a couple of them. There are smart thermostats. Amazon decided to expand their Echo line and they came out with uh, something that is actually kind of more, more of like the beginning of the Internet of Things. And they came out with uh, several devices. For example, there's a clock now. It's just a wall clock, except it's linked to Echo. And it'll, you know, if you tell Alexa, um, I have an appointment at such and such a time, the clock will like flash or something. And uh, there's an Amazon Echo microwave oven. Yeah, like a microwave oven. Uh, they're selling it for $60, which is obviously how they're going to get people to buy them. But uh, this is supposed to be glorious because you get rid of your current microwave oven, you put the Echo microwave oven in, and it connects to your existing Amazon Echo gizmo, and then you can do things like when you're holding your child and your hands aren't free, you can say, you know, basically, microwave, reheat my coffee, and it'll go compliance, and then, you know, fire up and reheat your coffee. Um, this is the glorious future, you see. So there's a couple other funky devices. They came out with Amazon Echo security cameras. Yeah, um, obviously uh, everyone has heard of the situation where you're at dinner with some friends and you've all got your smartphones, you know, you've got your smartphone, it's sitting on the table, you're not talking on the phone, it's just on, it's in standby mode, you're not actually using it. And during the co course of the conversation, someone mentions a certain product or a movie or something, and then you get home and you hop on the internet or you hop on your phone later later that evening and suddenly uh, Amazon is recommending that movie to you. They're, they're shoving the product in your face and you go, well, geez, how did that happen? Well, of course, it happens because all of these gizmos are actually spying on us and they're spying on us for uh, actually two different reasons. But one of the reasons is to sell us more stuff. So this is kind of the beginning of the Internet of Things. The idea is that everything will be Internet connected. We have Internet connected refrigerators. Now we have Internet connected microwaves and they're all linked together to like Amazon Echo or the Google service or the Apple one and where it's this glorious future where everything will be Internet connected and it will make our lives so much easier. It also means that everything you say and do is going to be, you know, uh, audio and video compressed and shot up to Amazon or Google's roomfuls of servers and they're going to process it so they know everything about you and they can sell you stuff. Right. The second reason is uh, a little bit less holy, shall we say. Um, there's an article on my website that I posted uh, a couple weeks ago about a book by Yasha Levine entitled Surveillance Valley and everyone needs to read this book because he starts in the 1950s and he goes all the way up to the modern era and he talks about uh, how basically all these companies that started all these things um, and, and it was before they even existed, before Amazon, before Google, there was this push for essentially total surveillance. And it's um, bottom line is companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon are in bed with the military industrial complex and they have been forever. That's, that's the gist of it. And like he even talks about, for example, uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin founded Google and Larry Page, when he wanted to write a PhD thesis, his thesis was about, uh, more or less the page rank algorithm that became the founding of the Google search engine way back when. And his PhD thesis was actually funded by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. 
since then, nothing has really changed. Um, you know, Amazon is great because you can buy anything cheaper, but um, what he's really saying is that anytime you have one of these companies, <clears throat> there's kind of their primary purpose, which is, you know, Google wants to make it easier for you to find things on the internet. But simultaneous to this, uh, you know, Amazon wants to sell you stuff. There's the primary purpose, but then there's the, the other purpose behind it. The reason they get venture capital funding and all this kind of stuff is because there are always back doors built in, or apparently Google even has a whole branch that's basically like spooks basically working there and, and hoovering up data, and because they have free access to this stuff, uh, it, it's okay, and then Google is successful and Amazon is successful and that sort of thing. The spying part, it happens for a variety of reasons, which you'll understand if you read the book Surveillance Valley by Yasha Levine, which I will link to in the description. So, okay, you have your internet of things and it's becoming more popular because we want to sell people more stuff and we want to spy on them more. And then of course we come to the normal thing where people say, well, you know, I don't have anything to hide. And I've talked about this before. Uh, many people responded and said, yeah, yeah, I don't have anything to hide. I don't have anything to hide. And, you know, I said before, I think, you know, maybe people are just actually afraid, but I don't think that's it. I think that most people don't actually mind um, if they are aware of what's going on. They don't really mind because they actually want someone watching over them. Not in the sense of like big brother or big parent, but in the sense that we're all sort of kind of self-centered, narcissistic human beings. And so we think it's kind of you know, maybe subconsciously we think it's great that someone is interested in what I want to buy and someone is interested in my beliefs and my thoughts about things and my purchase habits and where I had dinner that night and we sort of think on some level that this is just glorious and so that's why we don't complain more. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, so you have this internet of things, it's being used to sell stuff, it's being used to spy on you. Where does 5G come into this? Well, in order for uh, more stuff to become internet enabled, we need more bandwidth. Because if you have all the gizmos you have now, laptops, desktops, smartphones, tablets, uh, smartwatches, this sort of thing, um, that all requires a certain amount of, of data to be transmitted you know, between all the devices that comprise this network. Uh, if you want everything to be internet connected, you're going to need a lot more bandwidth. It's going to need to be faster, uh, higher bandwidth, and lower latency to make it all work ideally. So enter 5G. Now, um, it's interesting because there's an article on the website techspot.com, and the title of this article is The State of 5G, When It's Coming, How Fast It Will Be, and the Sci-Fi Future It Will Enable. And it's, it's kind of interesting because uh, one of the very first paragraphs is, I'll just read it here, they write, Many industries expect 5G to generate billions of dollars through currently unrealized revenue streams, providing an endless supply of applications and services to the more than 4 billion additional people 5G is hoped to reach. Qualcomm, for example, predicts that by 2035, the network will enable $12 trillion worth of goods and services, and the company has claimed in the past that 5G will be, quote, bigger than electricity. Uh, the World Economic Forum describes the era we are entering as the fourth industrial revolution. So it's all about selling you more crap that you don't need because your current microwave, which works just fine, you got to throw that one out the window and get an Amazon Echo Super Alexa microwave because because Internet of Things, right? Okay, well, first of all, if you haven't watched my video uh, uh, on 5G, the, the health, the possibly negative health effects of 5G, you should probably watch that one. Um, interestingly enough, in this TechSpot article, they mention the exact same stuff that I mentioned, the studies that I quoted where they're talking about how uh, 5G, the millimeter wave frequencies, will um they have an they have multiple negative health effects but one of them is that the the sweat ducts in our skin are helical in nature they look like little coils and these 5g frequencies directly affect the sweat ducts and there is actually another guy i came across recently what did i do with it there's another guy i came across recently 
by the name of Dr. Ben Ishe of the Department of Physics at Hebrew University. There's another YouTube video, which I'll also link to that. I think it's like 36 minutes long. It's kind of long. He goes kind of technical. He's a physicist, and his conclusions are not really anything in terms of the health effects because he says, well, you know, I'm not a physiologist, I'm not a doctor. Uh, the people he's talking to in the audience, apparently many of them were. So he's saying, look, I'm just, you know, here's here's what we found. And what they found was exactly what these other studies reported, that 5G frequencies do affect helical uh, sweat ducts. Uh, and there are other interesting effects because uh, apparently the water content of skin is especially important. Uh, your skin has several layers. It goes from the dry, dead cells down to living cells at, at the lower layers. And this difference in water content also has an effect. Um, it's kind of like if you have a, a smartphone connected to a cell tower and it starts pouring rain, you have what's called rain fade, which means that all the little water droplets falling between your phone and the tower out here, it's going to attenuate the signal and you're going to have problems. So the transmitter and receiver have to kind of compensate for this, this so-called rain fade. So um, he talks about a couple different things. I won't go into great detail. You can watch that video if you want. He does say... Uh, Another interesting thing, um, there's another researcher that he knows who the guy's trying to figure out how to use human skin as a data connection. So like if you have a smartwatch on this wrist and you're holding your smartphone in this hand, what he wants to do is enable it so that your smartwatch and your phone can actually send 5G type signals directly through your skin. So like the signal would go through your body to your smartwatch and then back through through your skin back to the phone. He essentially wants to use human skin as a network connection. The, the trouble that he's having is basically, again, this issue of helical sweat ducts. It's, it's going to interfere with the signals because something's going on there. So um, the point of all that is that uh, it's not just these studies that I quoted. There are more. If you look, you can find more and more and more. Uh, and in fact, way back, uh, I have here... Uh, a press release, press release number 208 from May 31st, 2011, from the World Health Organization, where they write that the WHO has classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans based on an increased risk for glioma, a malignant type of brain cancer associated with wireless phone use. So there's all kinds of concern about this. There has been for a while, and obviously none of this is just based on a bunch of people being hysterical, because there are many people, doctors, uh, physicists, everything, they're all doing these studies, and they're all seeing these effects. Uh, and yet, nevertheless, we're pushing forward with this 5G Internet of Things. So you have the spying, you have the money-making, you have the potential health disaster, but they're going to go forward with it anyway. So, okay, 5G is going to enable an even better Internet of Things. What does that actually mean? Well, it means some pretty crazy stuff. It means that we're going to have things like smart dust. Yes, smart dust. There's some research going on uh, that's funded by DARPA. Oh, surprise! DARPA, who funded Larry Page's PhD thesis, which was the founding of Google, is funding research into smart dust, which is basically teeny tiny little grains that are powered by ultrasound, apparently. They're powered by ultras ultrasound, and they will actually, like, inject them into your body, and they will somehow affect the nervous system, but you need, like, a transmitter on the outside that powers them with ultrasound, and then they'll do stuff. And So we're going to have smart dust. Not just smartphones and smart watches, but 5G-enabled smart dust. How about that? <laughs> um, there's there's all kinds of other stuff like always connected PCs and every device is going to be like oh it's going to be great because we're going to have like everything will be internet enabled your you know your socks will be internet enabled your shoes will be internet enabled uh, your wedding band will be connected to the internet your the dust will be connected to the internet. Everything will be a little camera and microphone, and it's all going to be connected to the internet. It's all going to be monitoring everything, and, and of course, it's going to make companies trillions of dollars, which is why they want to do it all. Um, so yeah, that's why it, <clears throat> that's why it's 5G Internet of Things because you need the extra bandwidth, uh, you need the extra capacity, you need the, the the lower latencies, 
and this is what they're trying to do and we see the beginnings of it in Amazon Echo and the Amazon microwave and the Amazon clock um, there are a few problems because um, 5G to 5G waves they propagate differently than the current generation of like cellular signals and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because of the higher frequencies that 5G will eventually use uh, 5G signals don't they don't actually pass through like say the walls of buildings they don't pass through trees 5G waves don't pass through uh, the leaves on a tree 5G can't pass through rain for example whereas before you have rain fade where it just kind of attenuates the signals rain totally blocks 5G signals so more or less so what you end up what what you end up having to do is if you want to have this internet of things then that means you're going to need uh, upwards of 100 to 200 times as many antennas so in many countries they've already agreed that like yes yes we're going to have these micro cells which is going to be a little box it's basically going to be a 5g uh, cell 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 what, what, what today you would call a cell phone tower they're going to be 5g towers but there's going to be one on every street street light post every lamp post in every neighborhood because you need line of sight so and that most likely means that you're also going to have 5g enabled devices uh, inside your house to get better coverage so no matter where you go there's going to be 100 percent coverage uh, that tends to make the health concerns even more of a concern because it's not just going to be you know oh well i'm okay because like like here where i live i'm i'm a couple kilometers away from the nearest cell tower and the house i live in has thick walls so the reception inside is very very bad uh, if they put one of these 5G boxes on the street light right in front of my house, well then, then I'm going to be in trouble. So this is the wonderful future, the 5G Internet of Things. Everything's going to be a transmitter and receiver, everything's going to be a microphone, everything's going to be a camera, everything's going to be watching everything you're doing. And you'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to recommend just the right pair of shoes for you. Um, they'll, yeah that's the glorious future fortunately I don't think it's actually going to pan out that way because companies often have these these glorious ideas and of course 5g is already rolling out in certain cities but um, we'll see how it uh, how it plays out but yeah that's uh, that's the brave new world that we're heading towards so uh, for more techie tips see scotty's tech.info thanks for watching see you next time